Hello glue sniffers, welcome to the first episode of my half track diorama. If you are familiar with my channel, you will know that I was mostly building old Tamiya vintage kits. Nothing wrong with them, but this time I decided to try something from 2023. So today we will be building this nice 8 ton half track from Daswerk. When it was already on its way, I discovered that it is actually a Dragon reboxing from 2009. But still, 1975-2009 makes quite a difference. Let's open that box and see what's inside. Ok, we have some instructions and we will be talking about them a lot in this video. A nice tree with 6 figures, but this will be the topic of another video. And here we have a huge pillow of parts. And of course some decals. When we open the pillow, we will find a ton of grey styrene plastic trees, some photo etched elements, a tree with clear styrene stuff, rubber tires, a towing cable and two bags with truck parts. Let's get this party started with the lower chassis. I don't know how many dragon kits you have built, this is the first one for me and I can see that everything is super detailed and broken down to 100 pieces. And quite soon the problem started. The right order of gluing the pieces is very important but inexistent in the instructions, so ripping the already glued parts from the model was the only way in quite a few cases. Step 1 done, 23 parts, not bad at all. The build was mostly about putting together small sub-assemblies. I was using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement in small amounts because you never know when you will have to tear something apart. Here we have a quite complex part, let's look at the instructions. Perfect, totally useless, I will skip it. When the sub-assembly is ready, we can put it on the main chassis. I was using masking tape and clamps to force the parts into the right positions. After a few days of struggling, I can finally say that I cracked those instructions. It is simple. If you pay attention, you will see that this sign appears quite a lot. It means problems. I mean, they are sure as death and taxes. All you have to do is figure out what the problem is. It can be anything, gluing order, being careful with the orientation, health hazards, bad weather coming. Then, in some cases, the sign is there but there is not an obvious reason for it. No worries, it is not there for nothing. I turned the axle around and now the pin is not meeting the control rod. But then you take a look at this beautiful 16 part engine and life is great again. I mean, look at this thing, it's amazing. If you are an expert model builder and also have some experience as a World War II truck mechanic, it will help a lot. Jokes aside, those instructions are terrible. At the end, a few more pages with more detailed steps is all I'm asking for. Let's take a look at the wheels, and this big beast has quite a lot of them. The front wheels with the tires are nicely made, and the cleaning of the plastic is mostly unnecessary, because everything will be hidden in the end. Be sure to use black CA, because it has rubber particles in it. The ordinary one will not grab the rubber. Then be careful not to follow the instructions, because if they were unclear until now, now they are totally wrong. Those are the pairs that you should put together. And I was using the axle, because without it you can't pair them correctly. Use the glue lightly and carefully remove the axle after a few seconds. The holes for the wheels axles were a bit tight, so I corrected them with the drill bit. Always start with a smaller bit and then use a larger one if needed. And now a test build. And this is only one side. 
Did I tell you that this kit is super detailed? Well, look at this little thing. Only 4 pieces. Amazing. I quickly made some improvements to the hook. I also used a piece of heat shrinking tube to make it more interesting. The provided towing cable was not collaborating at all, because it was like a spring and for some reason it was not accepting CA glue well. I quickly made a copper one. The step by step tutorial is on my Patreon page. Speaking of Patreons, I will take a second to say thank you to all of them. I will invite you to join our wonderful community. You will support me and you will get a lot for a small amount of money. It's free for 7 days, so you can see if you like it. We now have a rolling chassis, and I must say that those German engineers really knew how to make things complicated. With all those parts, something must go wrong for sure. On the other hand, this thing looks amazing. Now for the tracks. I promised to myself that no matter what came out of those bags, I will not try to clean them. And there was no need for cleaning. All you have to do is glue the pads in place. I don't know if they are meant to remain workable, but you can achieve this without problems. You just need some care to avoid snapping those fragile pins. And here we have them. They look great, and it took me about 3 hours to do all the work. Congratulations, Das Werk, or Dragon. The work on the upper part started with a quite a scary step changing the fender edges. But hey, if the instructions say so, let's compare them. Ooh, quite a difference. Most of the cutting was done with the scraping tool. Then I installed the new ones, section by section, like a spot welder. The inner edge was reinforced with thin CA. I was very happy with the result. No putty was used. Some of the parts were not straight, so I used clamps and CA glue to obtain strong bonds. Of course, a lot of test fitting was done. I was putting together different elements of the interior, including the tools, and I started thinking if I should paint those first and put them together later. You know, something like aircraft modelers do with the cockpits. You obviously know what I did because of the thumbnail, but I wasn't sure at all at that point. This rear basket was a real treat, but somehow I managed to put it together decently. The problem was that it was badly warped, and I tried to repair it with some heat. Those baskets were saying cargo to me, so I started thinking about what I should use. We will talk about this later. Photo etched parts time. Those will be nice details in the end. Everything was ready and the decision was needed. To paint the interior now or later. I was changing my mind every half hour. That night I went to bed 100% sure that I would build the model and paint everything in the end. And here I am the day after putting black primer on the interior, with the mayor of the nearby town closely watching me. My last two models were painted with the post-shading approach. So I decided to use pre-shading or better pre-lightening on this one. We start with black primer and then we create some light by airbrushing white paint on the parts. Starting with the interior was good because most of it will be hidden in case I screw something. Black and white are in place, so we can proceed with the base paint. You just have to apply multiple light coats so the previous work is still visible. We will go into details in the next episode when we will be painting the entire model. After the painting procedure you should end up with something like this. The next step was a pin wash. I opted for artistic oils and white spirit in this case. The problem was the flat surface of the paint. Cleaning away the excess was quite tedious. So on the exterior I will definitely go for a coat of satin varnish. Anyway, the interior is coming to life. Now we will paint the leather seats. The first step was a dark brown base color. Multiple coats were applied in order to obtain full coverage and German camo black brown is great for this task. Then I added some black and did the shadows. 
I was just following the sculpture of the seats and painting the recesses. I started the highlights with orange brown. This color works great for simulating leather. All you have to do is apply it in in multiple applications. You can always take the base brown color and apply it over the transitions in order to make them smoother. You can see that we are getting somewhere. Next, I added a rocky sand to the orange brown and reinforced the highlights, but here I was already simulating some worn effect. Pure rocky sand was used to do some scratches and reinforce the worn edges. And here they are, not bad at all. The tools were done with my standard weapons painting approach, which is already available on my channel. The last step for the seats was an overall filter of raw amber oil paint to unify everything. Some graphite highlights on the metal parts and here we are with the final painting step for the interior. Highlighting the details. This step is quite simple, you just have to paint the details in a lighter version of the base color. I have a Dunkelgelb modulation set from Amo and I use the lightest color for this task. Just a few basic steps and our interior is done. It looks quite interesting and I got my feet wet with the painting procedure, so now I know what works and what not. I was using the clamps to keep the pieces aligned for good and thin CA glue to glue fix them permanently. Try to choose hidden places where the excess glue will not be visible at the end. The sides were glued in place section by section. In those hidden corners you can add more glue to ensure the bond. There is something very wrong with that back piece, but here I still don't know what. Anyway, I wouldn't recommend this Revel Contacta glue to my worst enemy, but it is great in some cases like this. In this case the part doesn't click in place, it moves freely. So if you use this Revel sludge, the glue will grab immediately because it is thick, but you will have about 10 minutes to position the part correctly. I mostly use it for figures. Two nasty gaps appeared and putty wouldn't make it in this case, so I filled them with some styrene. I made them rock solid with CA from inside. When they were dry, I just cut away the excess and sanded them. Putting the firewall part in place was not fun at all, but at the time I knew that filling gaps with putty would be inevitable, so... When I put the rear plate with the baskets on, I again realized that something was really wrong here in the back. I will tell people that that bed door is damaged or something. It's time to fill some gaps. If I must point out a topic of model building that I hate and stink at the most, this would be working with Paddy. I'm constantly looking for shortcuts so I can avoid doing things properly. And this one was not an exception. I was just filling the gaps with Mr. Surface Surf 1200 and a small brush. The Paddy will sink after a few minutes, so you should repeat the process a few times. At the end, I did some sanding with different sanding sticks on the back and used the cotton swap and some Mr. Leveling thinner in the front where the parts were more complicated. To my surprise, the thinner was removing the surfacer or putty even the day after. It's good to know this. I was happily putting those outside handles in place and it turned out that it's better to glue them in place and clean them after, because they are quite small. I don't know why I took a look at the instructions at that moment and realized that those side plates shouldn't have handles or holes for them at all. And everything was clear. I used the wrong side plates. And this was probably the origin of all the problems in the back. In this case I cannot blame the instructions I'm afraid. Shame on me and let's move on. Now it was time to put all the remaining bits and bobs in place. This front end looks so cool and I can't wait to see it painted. The main three elements were ready and I decided to glue them together. Painting the lower part will not be a problem because it will be mostly hidden. What haunts me in my dreams is how to mask the painted interior, but we will come up with something. I was looking for contact points and touching them with thin CA. 
If the part fits badly, you can start to partially fix it with styrene cement and then assure it with CA. Here the capillarity effect helps us a lot and because the glue is fast, the bond is done in a few seconds. And trust me, you need this because there is a lot of pushing and holding parts in place and in this case, fast glue is a must. I decided not to glue the motor cover because I will be doing a camouflage paint job for the first time and I can't imagine doing it with the fenders and all those antennas in the way. And you guessed it, that beautiful engine will not go inside because it would be a total waste. I will use it for a vignette or something. Let's fill those baskets. I was playing with the arrangement a lot. And when I was happy with it, I started gluing piles of cargo together. Just fix the part with some CA glue and then reinforce the bond. Those piles will be easier to paint together. I decided to fill the big basket with food mainly and keep the rear one for fuel and technical stuff. That big 200 liter barrel was criticized a lot by my colleagues and patrons. I like it because it breaks up the otherwise boring shape of the model. It will be tied down with ropes and for those who say that it's too heavy for that structure, well, who says that it is full? Anyway, it makes people talk and think and this is good, so I will keep it there. So, my biggest and most complex model so far is done and ready to be painted. I also have a nice idea of how to cover that mess in the back. Now that I think about it, I must say that this kit is probably wasted to be used for a diorama. It is so detailed and complex that I would recommend making it a single vehicle, all opened and super detailed. The next episode will be all about painting and weathering. As I said, I will try to do a camouflage pattern on it for the first time, so I'm both excited and scared. I hope you find this video interesting. Try out my Patreon page if you want, and until the next one, stay healthy, stay cool, and put some glue on the styrene too. Bye.